with a check-in from training camp with the Steelers. And to do so, we bring in our tag team crew here of Evan Washburn and Brian BMAC McFadden. BMAC, I'm sure feeling right at home there uh, back with the Steelers. Guys, I want to start by talking about this quarterback conversation because obviously with Russell Wilson sort of missing out on that first week, uh, it gave some room for Justin Fields to really make this a case for him to be the starter. So BMAC, based on what you've seen out of the two quarterbacks so far, do you think Justin Fields has moved the needle a little bit there with Mike Tomlin or is this still Russell Wilson's job to lose? I don't think Justin has moved the needle. But I think he has sparked the interest, well said. right? Clearly, it's Russell's job to lose. Unfortunately for Russell, he hasn't been able to do a lot because of the, the calf injury, and that has led to opportunities to Justin Fields. And he's been the ultimate professional in taking advantage of those said opportunities. Today, Evan, we watched practice. I can say this. He made some big-time throws. Yeah. For a guy to be newly you know, acclimated to this team, offensively, new playbook, he looked very, very comfortable. He was orchestrating the offense like the ultimate point guard. And he was making plays. And the thing that I love about Justin Fields, you know, being a longtime lifer when it comes to a, a Pittsburgh Steeler, we never really had that quarterback that could be considered a plus one in the running game. And seven shots in the red zone, read option, Justin Fields made a move, touchdown. When you have that type of athleticism at the quarterback position, it becomes more intriguing in what he could do and what he could add. So, like I said, the needle hasn't been moved just yet, but the interest clearly has been sparked because he has taken advantage of the opportunities. Yeah, and talking to Mike Tomlin after practice, he reiterated that Russell is in that pole position, but it's obvious, and I don't think it's just lip service, BMAC. He's excited with his options at that position, and I couldn't agree with you more that what Justin Fields provides right now, it's undeniable. It's speed and athleticism, mm -hmm. and I think whether Russell's the starter from day one or not, there has to be a package in there for Justin Fields because Arthur Smith is too creative of a play caller to ignore what would be such a weapon. Mike Tomlin always says one man's misfortune is another man's opportunity. So we'll see how that phrase sort of sticks with those quarterbacks. But let's shift over and talk about the defensive side of the ball because kind of uh, some drama brewing, if you will, with six-time Pro Bowler defensive tackle Cam Hayward. He is at training camp, gentlemen, but he is looking for a new deal. He told reporters that, uh, you know, he wants to be in Pittsburgh, but if he has to move on, he's willing. Evan, from your perspective, what more can you tell us about Cam, Hay Cam Hayward's situation and, and what he's going to look like in this Steelers defense this year? Look, he is one of the anchors of this team entering year 14 BMAC. And Cam Hayward is a guy that they feel like still has some football left in him. And I think that contractually, as we know here, they are very quiet about mm. handling those things behind the scenes. This is the time to get it done because with the Steelers, once the season starts, all contract discussions yep. go to the side. It would be hard to imagine that they don't do something to make sure Cam Hayward Word is taken care of, if you will. Look, they have Keanu Benton, who they feel like is the star. The next came Hayward at the interior of that defensive line. But this is a defense that is built to win now and to really lead this team on a playoff push. And Cam Hayward is somebody that they have to have playing and playing in a place where he's happy with where he is contractually. Evan, I don't know if you know this or not. I played with Cam Hayward. <laughs> I was a part of the team when Cam Hayward was drafted. So I know what he means to this organization, one of the more steady, productive players throughout his tenure here in Pittsburgh, a leader on and off the football field. And I agree with you. I think at some point in time, quietly, under the radar, they will try to get something done that will allow Cam to be a part of the Steelers organization outside of 2024. I think for Cam, it's all about showing the organization that I have more years left in the tank. We didn't really see Cam's best effort a year ago because of injury. Yep. Injury plague season did not lead to the production that we've seen throughout his uh, throughout his career. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, in my opinion. I think he gets into the Hall at some point. I think he will find a way to continue to play for Pittsburgh after 2024. It's just a matter of time. And like you said, this is one of the more sneaky organizations in the National Football League where you don't hear or see when things are getting done. All of a sudden, it comes out of nowhere. They got something done. Yeah, and, and my last point to it, too, that I wanted to add, Cam Hayward's value in Pittsburgh 
is different than his value anywhere else. Mm. And I think both parties recognize that. So that's a reason why something should get done. It's important to note, too, this is a guy, BMAC, like you said, he means a lot to the organization off of the field as well. Of course, won the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award a couple seasons ago. So clearly he's a leader on this team. But no bigger leader than Mike Tomlin entering year 18 with the Steelers organization still has not had a losing season, gentlemen. BMAC, as a guy who has been a part of this organization, you've seen Mike Tomlin up close and personal. What is it about his coaching style that allows the Steelers to not only be successful on the field, but to keep him successful as well? It's hard to not see or feel the love for football when you're around Mike Tomlin, especially in this atmosphere in St. Vincent Latrobe. His love clearly tells all of us why he is so successful. The energy that he provided today was not just vocally, but just through his vibe, through his, his presence. And they did a drill, which is called seven shots, Evan. We saw it down in the red zone. Mike Tomlin was talking to myself, Troy Palomalo, and Ike Taylor. He said, first day of pass, we're going to really check the temperature of these guys. All runs. All runs. Now, as a defender, you don't know. Offense, they have either option available. And through seven plays, there was one pass, which was an audible by Justin Fields. But that was the, the, the momentum that he wanted to establish. And he said, also, we're going to build a team within the team at the line of scrimmage. And Evan, if you look at the draft, the first two yep. selections were all interior guys on the offensive side. So the mentality that he has, he has newfound motivation. And that's the thing that I love about a guy when you talk about reach the pinnacle of everything he's done. He's still hungry. He hasn't eaten anything yet. He's trying to put food on his plate and not just feed himself, but feed everyone else that's involved in this building block to trying to assemble a championship team. So just the motivation and the energy, and he talks so much trash. I don't know if a lot of other head coaches do this, but he talked trash to the offensive guys, to the defensive guys, just to get, motiv get them motivated and get their motor going. And and that's what he's doing, and that's what he will do throughout this entire training camp process leading into the season. And you mentioned seven shots, which is, is an identifiable drill here in Latrobe with the pads come on. But there's also backs versus backers. Oh, yeah. And if you want to see Mike Tomlin energized like a young football player, basically, just watch him in that drill. And I asked him about it after practice, and he said, yes, there's coaching points to that, but for him, it's a chance, as you laid out, to test guys, mm -hmm. to test young guys. I remember being on this field, whatever it was, T.J. Watt's rookie year, and seeing him just immediately recognize when T.J. Watt did that drill that he had something special. Yeah. A coach to that caliber, I think, can identify quickly in a few of these moments in these drills, if he's got something. And it's funny you mentioned T.J. Watt's rookie year and seeing what he has. We kind of saw that today with Peyton Wilson. I thought I was going to say. And, and that, the yeah. thing about this, Peyton Wilson would have been a first round if, 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 if he was healthy. But guess who he called out for Peyton to go against? Mr. Jalen Warren. Now, if you don't know anything about Steeler football, Jalen Warren is not the guy you have an issue with. And he wanted to see them go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It wasn't just one reps. It was two reps back-to-back -back because Mike Tomlin wanted to say, wanted to see, let me see what the young fella got. We know you can run around yeah. and make plays, but we want to see what you will do when it's man-on-man -man and you got to move another man when he doesn't want to be moved. That's what they do here, and that's why this team will be very, very physical. I'm jacked up right now. No question. Mac, how going? I know. I was going to say, I forgot, Evan, to ask you our vibe check uh, before we started here, but obviously the vibes are very high. It's very competitive out there between the offense and the defense. Mike Tomlin, by the way, uh, the third longest winning streak when it comes to seasons in the NFL. Only Tom Landry and Bill Belichick have longer winning streaks when it comes to being successful. So obviously he's excited, but gentlemen, It'll be interesting to see if all that competition and what you're seeing at training camp will translate to what is always a very physical AFC North. So Evan, uh, you know, based on what you've seen at training camp so far, I know it's early. We have yet to really see what this team is capable of. What are the expectations that you're hearing from Pittsburgh and what they can do in the division this year? Well, BMAC knows it. Anybody in Pittsburgh that's a fan of this organization knows it, that covers this team knows it. The standard's the standard. And the standard for this team, obviously not a losing record. They've taken care of that for 20-plus seasons. But this team needs to get back to the playoffs and to win a playoff game. That's going to be an immense challenge based off of their division and the AFC as a whole. 
From my perspective, BMAC, and yeah. look, we can't take too much away from one practice, but you know this team extremely well. We know some of the established players on both sides of the ball. If they get B to B-plus level quarterback play, I think this team can win a playoff game. Yeah. That's how I view it. I don't know if how that comes yeah. in terms of the division or getting into the playoffs, but if they get B to B-plus level play from whether it's Russell Wilson or Justin Fields or both, this is a team with the defense that they have and some of the playmakers that they have that's capable of winning a playoff game. Evan, do you believe in trends? I do. I do also. That's why I really, really like you. <laughs> I believe in trends. And with that being said, 2008 summer, the Summer Olympics were going on. Okay. Right? 2008 NBA season, the Boston Celtics won a uh, NBA championship. Right, see where correct? We're going here. 2024, the Summer Olympics is currently going on, oh, right? Jeez. <laughs> Who won the NBA championship this season? The Boston Celtics. So with that being said, check your football history. Who won the Super Bowl 2008 season? The Pittsburgh Steelers. That's a nice trend. So you guys know where I'm going. <laughs> you can say whatever you want to say about me. We, we come here all the time, and every year... I like Pittsburgh to get into the playoffs. I like them to represent it in, in the division. But with those trends, I like the final game to be in New Orleans. Training camp tour is over. We figured it out. Thanks for having us. There we go. We don't need to talk about <laughs> anything else up. because BMAC's already picking the Super Bowl winner. Guys, thanks so much for hopping on with us here on HQ. BMAC, I'm rooting for your Steelers this year, man. Uh, they certainly could use a playoff win. Hey, listen, the season begins officially on September 8th over on CBS when the NFL returns. We will get to see the Steelers in action in CBS Week 2 when they face the Broncos on the road. That game again on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus.